Hello, and welcome to another training for Hello TV. Today we're going to go over Production Truck, a broadcast software that will help enhance your broadcast when using the Huddle TV streaming service. Once you've gotten your production truck downloaded and you're logged into the software, you'll be able to see everything that the software provides, with camera sources, overlays, replays, using audio. But first, before we get into anything, we're going to test our network. Now, network is very important when it comes to streaming. You'll be able to see if you have a strong enough internet connection to stream. So when we have this test run, it tells us if it's successful or not. And if it is, we'll be able to be ready to go with our stream. You also have the RTMP port 80 option to enable if you run into any network blockages. If there's any further blockages, you'll have to talk with your IT team. Then we're now we're going to go into creating a broadcast. Now, typically you'll be able to see your broadcasts available if you schedule them through the Focus app, but if you need to schedule them outside of that, you'll be able to schedule them inside Production Truck. You can add in your section, which is your sport. You'll be able to add a title for what the game is called, and you'll be able to put in a description for fans to know further information if necessary. After that, you'll be able to add in the scheduled start time. You can schedule this in advance, or if you're ready to go when you want it, you can be able to schedule it about five to 10 minutes in advance to be ready to go streaming. Everything else is not necessary in this case. It's extra things that you can be able to add into the broadcast, but we won't go over that at this time. Now we're gonna go into adding our sources. So we'll be able to go into our video sources as you see our title of our broadcast. And what we'll do is we'll go to our preferences wheel, click on that, and once that's done, you'll be able to see the sources that you can select. So we're gonna to go to camera one and select our source, which is a capture device, a Blackmagic Decklink Duo, that we, we actually uh, recommend to use when coming to using these kind of cameras that are either HDMI or SDI compatible. You have to plug those into those capture devices and the capture devices plug into the computer. Then we add in our audio source, a mixer that's plugged into the computer via USB connection. And now we can be able to see our camera sources. We'll be able to cut between them. You can see on the left-hand side is our preview monitors that all the different cameras that we have added. And the top right is the program monitor where we actually will see what we're pushing out to the broadcast. Next, we go into the audio mixer and that shows our options of selecting multiple audio sources outside of just the one we selected. So we add a second one in, like our internal microphone for the computer. And you can see the levels for these audio sources. You can be able to move them up and down. You can be able to mute them. You can be able to uh, audio preview it by be able to listening to the audio through production truck. That would be coming through your speakers of your computer or through the headphones that you have plugged in. Now that we've got an audio situated, we're going to move on to our overlays. Now the overlays is opened up by that plus symbol on the bottom left. You, you most likely have to download your overlays first if you haven't done so, but in this case we already downloaded the overlays that we need. So we're going to go to the open tab, go to our football section, and open up these two overlays, our football scoreboard and the control panel. We're also going to go over and find our image overlay queue, uh, an overlay that, that we use utilize for sponsorships. Once we've gotten these overlays open, we're going to manage them and kind of organize them how we want them. And we're going to drag over our football scoreboard and our image overlay queue to the right hand side. That's the preview section for your overlays. Now the control panel for the scoreboard is where the information is stored. So that's where you enter in team information for both teams. So the away team, we can add in a color, the team abbreviation, we can add in some additional information, even a logo if we want. But for now, we're just going to be putting in abbreviate abbreviation and our colors so that they show up on that scoreboard. Next, we're going to be able to update that game information. And you can see by utilizing the score, we can update the period, the quarter. We can update the game clock so we can show that. We can also show a play clock, but that is only utilized with external uh, software that can get plugged into a uh, production truck. And we don't have that today, so we're not going to go over that. We can also be able to utilize the down and distance by updating it each time. It allows you to show off where is the ball and how close is it. Is it even a third and goal? And once we have a touchdown, we can add in our touchdown, which has a nice little transition for the overlay for each team. This is the same thing for field goals as well. 
Now we start our clock so we can see that the clock is moving. We manually start and stop it however we want. We can also utilize when a penalty has been thrown or when a timeout has been taken. Now we're going to move over and we actually, before we get to move on, we're going to show you how to be able to bring that into your broadcast. So this has just been shown in the preview screen, but what we want to bring onto the program screen, we hit that overlay button and that brings it up into the top right. So that's actually showing on the broadcast now. Next, we have that image overlay queue. We hit that plus symbol. We're going to bring in some overlays that we've stored in our computer. We have three here today. So remember to choose your file just below custom image. Select that image that's stored on your local computer. And then hit apply to bring that into the image overlay queue. So this is a queue of multiple logos that will be able to rotate through and showcasing these sponsors. Once we clicked on that, we can hit the position and you can position how you want it. There's a custom position option based on if you want to have it that way with the different sizes. You can do a full screen option if you want to go to a full screen. You could, but in this case, we're going to use the watermark, which is something you'll be able to utilize for a lot of broadcasts that you do. We're going to position the top right. And once we've set that up, we can put that onto our program. We can then also be able to select the amount of time we want each overlay to show. So for each image, we're going to have it set for five seconds. And after five seconds, once we hit that play button, it's going to rotate through the different logos. And once that's done, that's automatically going to work that way. You can be able to save overlays. And this is done by changing it by right clicking on the overlay and saving it. So now that it's now been saved, it will be saved for later with those logos. So anytime you open a production truck, you're going to have to open up these overlays. So if you want to be able to save the information within the overlay, you can save it and have it ready for later. Next, we're going to go into our replay settings. So by going to our preferences wheel, we can select our camera options. We can toggle how long we want the replay to be captured for. In this case, we're going to do 10 seconds each. And then once we've done that, we can go and capture our replay. Now it's going to capture the last 10 seconds of our camera angles that we've selected. So once we've hit capture replay, it's going to show you multiple replays to choose from. And you can be able to toggle that down however much of the replay you want. And then you can transition the, the replay in. So we've hit the cut, it's now gone to the replay, and then it goes automatically back to your camera source you had previously selected. You can use the different transitions. You can also use our graphics. So that will be able to allow you to keep the graphics on during the replay if you wish. You can also use our audio override. This would typically be done with an audio clip that has audio, a video clip that has audio with it. Not so much with just going to a replay, but the option is there for you. We've gone through our video sources, our overlays, our replay, our audio. So now we're ready to go into our broadcast to start it. So to be able to actually start the broadcast, you first will hit test to go into test mode. This allows the production truck to establish connection and ensure that we're ready to stream. Once that, is that a connection has been established, live will light up and you'll be able to manually go live on your broadcast. So remember to hit test first to go into test mode. That allows you to be able to watch it from an admin perspective if you want on vCloud, but to actually push it out to the public broadcast or fans to watch, you have to hit live. Once live has been hit, we'll be able to transition into live mode. You can see on the status of production truck, it's transitioning into the live mode. This will take some time at, at, depending on the network connection. But once that is done and you've transitioned into live mode, you'll be able to see that we're verifying the live transition. And now the stream has been gone into live mode. You can see we have a, right, a red button at the top that's lighting up, that's telling you that you're streaming, it's counting up. And right now, at this point, we are streaming publicly to the broadcast, and fans are going to be able to watch whatever is being pushed out through Production Truck. So we can cut through cameras, we can be able to utilize replay, we can be able to use our overlays, anything that we're seeing over on the audio, that's going to be heard as well. And it's a great way to be able to enhance your broadcast and bring in multiple camera angles, these different cameras that you brought into the computer to be able to utilize for your broadcast. 
Once we're done with our broadcasts, we'll be able to we'll want to manually stop the broadcast before we close out a production truck so that we pro go through the process correctly. So when you're ready, you'll be able to go up to the live button and you'll click live to manually stop the broadcast. Once this has been done, we're going to be given a couple of options. So you confirm that you're stopping the broadcast. And you'll be given the options of either not done, archive, or delete. Now, in not done situation, that would mean that you can resume the stream at a later point, within an hour of when you're stopping the broadcast. So if there's a little bit of a delay to the broadcast, or maybe you started too early and you want to stop it and then start it up again, you can hit the not done option. There's also the ability to archive it, which would allow fans to watch it on demand, which is what we're going to do in this case. You can also delete it if you want to remove it completely from the system. Once it's been archived, you'll be able ready to go. It will be start the archive process automatically. It will archive automatically, and it will be available for fans to watch on demand. So that goes through all of our different elements that Production Truck offers in today's training. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to check out huddle.com support for more tutorials and trainings or get contact our support team. Thank you and have a good day.